All right, guys, welcome back to the No Limits podcast. We got a very special guest today. We got the one and only Nathan Barrett, also known as Dad. And Nathan, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm great, bro. Thank you for coming on. Thanks for having and, me. Of course, man. And you know what? Let's start off with people that might not be too familiar with you. Can we get a little introduction? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've been on YouTube since day one, uh, 2005. Uh, my channel started in 2006. Um, and I do characters, physical comedy, stunts, lots of dancing, but uh, kind of like Jim Carrey type stuff. And uh, in this fight, I'll be boxing as a character named Dad or Dadbot. He's like a robot. It's a whole weird series, but um, he's got a lot of songs. Uh, only thing I could compare it to would be Poppy. If you've ever heard of Poppy, it's totally different. But for someone who has never seen weird things, that's probably the closest thing. Uh, even though I don't like to make that comparison, but it kind of helps people understand what's going on. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much me. Yeah, bro. So you're a, you're an OG in the YouTube game. And it, it's cool to see you in this whole YouTube boxing scene because it's like more of a, I would say, a newer audience, a younger audience. And uh, yeah, as you brought up Creator Clash, that's what you're a part of. So let's get started with that. Okay. How, how did you get invited on the Creator Clash card? Like, how did this all come around? Uh, so I, I've i been wanting to box uh, in some sort of an event like this, a YouTube event. So I knew there was a lot of them happening. Uh, and I've been boxing for about... It, year and a half two years now almost and um just kind of training a little bit here and there not like anything too extensive and um people started tweeting me saying i does was looking for fighters last fall so i tweeted him and then a lot of people my followers on twitter like all retweeted it a ton and it got his attention and then he dm'd me and asked me my height and weight and i told him and then he said, all right, you're in. And I was like, all right, <laughs> perfect. So, uh, yeah, iDubs got me in after a, a tweet. So I got I got lucky. I'm super, super grateful because this is exactly what I've wanted to get in. And I feel that I've uh, this is the perfect one for me to be in because all the other people, I'm friends with a lot of people in this one. And uh, it's a lot of people from, like, old school YouTube. Uh, and it's because if I was in, like, in one of these other events that's happening, it's a lot of, like, newer channels with younger audiences that would probably not know who the heck I am but because of the other people in this event a lot of them already do know who I am they know my other characters I've been doing for a long time so I feel I got lucky getting in this one with iDubs and iDubs is his what he does is it brings a similar audience to what I do you know immature older ish people so yeah <laughs> yeah it's, no no it's a really unique event because once again, like it's it's people from like the OG YouTube game, and I saw Idub's video. He said it's basically his subscription list. It's people he watches personally, and yep. bro, this is for charity. So like hundred percent, so much more respect to all the fighters on the card. Like you can't yeah. complain. All you guys are fighting for charity, and yeah, what I was like interested about is like, so Idub's. I know he said he it's his subscription list. He like it's based on his own preference, right? Mm -hmm. But, like, was the selection process based on, like, um, who he wants or, like, who he thinks the fans wanted? Um, I'm guessing it was a little bit of both. I'm not sure too much, but, like, just based on what the things I've heard and read in the Discord, like, what he and Anissa were talking about when, like, looking for people, it's a little bit of both. It's, like, he finds pe when people suggest people to him or if he uh, hears someone is interested, like me, for example... I'm guessing he saw, I was like, oh yeah, Nathan, because he knows my Keith Apicary character, who is like a, he's like a gamer, who uh, does a lot of like, I do a lot of stunts and stuff. I say he, I forget that I'm the character. Uh, but Keith, that character does a lot of like public stunts, like falling off buildings in public. And it's a similar energy to some of the stuff that iDubs does. And uh, he knew of that character. So I think when he's heard I was in, he's like, oh, this makes sense. And uh, I'm friends with Aaron Hansen from Game Grumps and Matt, my opponent from super mega so the audiences all know each other so i think it, it just makes sense to him he's like okay this person and i'm and it's also just a matter of like pairing people with like height and weight you know so it's it's probably kind of hard uh to do all of this pairing and choosing because you want to make sure they have the right energy uh and aesthetic for the to match the event but also physically match people up which is kind of a hard thing to do so I think it's probably just a little bit of like if he thinks it makes sense for this event you know and yeah, yeah. who he likes and you guys all you guys have a lot of potential to like really um get into get involved with other events because the youtube boxing community it's tight like like it has a huge fan base and mm -hmm. 
you put on a good performance, you're gonna be your clout's gonna go on to another level. So I'm expecting. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm hoping getting for. Ready, right? I love this. It's like it's kind of like a fun new thing for me to do. As I've always been very physical, I do stunts. I'm a professional stunt man. I got I get hit by cars all the time in videos. I've wrestled. I've done stuff with WWE. Uh, I've trained for, for professional wrestling. I, would, I do gymnastics. I can. I taught myself how to do all sorts of flips, and uh, this is like a perfect thing for me to like do uh, not on the side, but like a new little venture in a way that's like it's still entertainment. It's still putting on a show, and I'm being physical, and I'm not like just dancing and doing the stunts anymore. It's like now I'm doing some sort of a sport. The closest sport I ever did was skateboarding, so this is great for me. And I know it's huge now, and it's a lot of young guys doing it, so. It's, I think it'll be, hopefully if I win, fingers crossed, I'm pretty sure I will, but it'll be like a new venue, a new avenue for me to take while making videos and short films and stuff. Uh, I'd love to do more of this. So if I win, I want to do another match right away, like this summer, this fall, if I can. And I know there's a ton of events coming up. So uh, I'm just putting the word out. If anyone wants the oldest guy on YouTube who's in pretty good shape and can definitely throw down, I'm down, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. I love the confidence, man. 100%. There's a lot of events going on. You put on a great performance. I'm I'm expecting to see you in another one. Let's let's go. I'm hoping to like this is because I don't normally do this like talk out of character. I like it's like I'm a bit Andy Kaufman when it comes to my characters, but this is a little different and I just I think it's kind of interesting to hear me talk Nathan not in character as dad, but normally I'm like always in character when I do things like this, yeah. but I I think at least in the event cuz not when when people see the event most of them aren't going to know who I am or my other character is, but I think it'll be intriguing when they're like, wait, what is, who is this guy? His name's dad. He's a, <laughs> is he a robot. Like, I think it'll be intriguing because everyone else is just going out as themselves. And so I'm hoping it mixes it up a little bit where it's like, oh, this is kind of cool. It has a little bit of like WWE yeah. uh, sense to it because I'll be performing, you know, in a character kind of, it's mostly, it's just me, but like the presentation and the entrance will be very much in character. So Hopefully people like it and they don't think it's cringy. <laughs> <laughs> Just be yourself, man. So can we expect this character out at the press conferences, weigh-ins, like WWE stuff? Oh, yeah. I will want for everything once the event like kicks into gear, like fight week, it's going to be all dad. Nathan, already in my, my promo videos, uh, Nathan's already been taken out. Dadbot has removed him, and dad is going for Matt, and that's the one who's going to be fighting, and that will be there on camera all the time. So it's gonna get it's gonna get weird. <laughs> <laughs> but like, okay, so another thing that I was interested in, and I think it's like a lot of people are talking about this, is how good iDubs really is. And you sparred iDubs just recently. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Talk yeah, a little yeah. bit I about did. that. Say it one more time. Can what you talk a little thing? bit about that, like how it, how it was sparring? Oh, yeah. IDubs? So I, I was I, I was a little bit like anxious going into it because like we were boxing a bunch of other guys, and then when we switched partners, I went. When we went for I, I went for I dubs. I was like, okay, here we go. Uh, let's see how he is, and let's see how I am against him. Because these other guys were like pros, and they were kind of taking it easy on me, just kind of helping me and training me a little bit, giving me pointers. And then when it was me and Ian, it was basically like, we're just gonna start punching each other because like <laughs> we can't teach each other anything. We're still learning. So it was interesting because I couldn't tell how hard I was hitting him, and we're not going all out. And I'm still kind of gauging, like, am I punching too hard? Am I matching his intensity? And uh, he, when he punched me, it hurt. Like, and we're both wearing headgear. But he was, like, really knocking me in the head when he'd get me and I wasn't blocking properly. So I was punching back. And I'm thinking, I don't know if this is even doing anything to him. And then after the fight was when I said, I was like, hey, man, I'm hoping I wasn't hitting too hard. He goes, oh, you were hitting hard. I was like, oh, okay, ooh, sorry. But he's like, no, it was, it was good because he's like, you're he was basically letting me know you know how to hit you're definitely making contact and like hitting me well so it was nice to hear that for me but when he was punching me he hits very hard like for real and i was like it jogged my one time he hit me and i was like you know it jogs your head and you kind of can't see for a second you gotta like look back and you're afraid to look and you're kind of like closing your eyes because you're still like wincing and stuff so he hit me really hard in the head and i was like okay he's strong for a guy who was like super skinny and now he weighs like 185 pounds He's like big and strong, and he, he's taller than I am. So it was a little, it's a little bit of an indicator of what I'm going to go up against with Matt because Matt is taller than me and has long arms. But um, yeah, he definitely has hitting power, and he took me down to my knee at one point. So he hit me directly in the stomach. I didn't Ooh. block it. It hit me like in the solar plexus, and it like knocked the wind out of me. And I tried to like compose myself. But I was like, okay, I can handle it. I can handle it. And I was like, 
Ooh, no, I can't. Like a second later, I had to go to my knee. And I was like, this isn't good. This isn't good for me for the fight because I need to be able to get through that. And I don't want to have to like stop. It's going to be super embarrassing. And I want to just power through. But I have to learn how to block better. It taught me a lot sparring with Ian um, that he's good. He knows what he's doing. And luckily, I'm not fighting him because I think he's taking it more serious than my opponent is, Matt, who has told me he's not taking it very seriously, or at least as much as I am. So I'm getting better. I'm feeling good. And uh, I'm hoping that all of this sparring with Ian and everyone is going to help me beat Matt. I mean, I'm feeling very confident, but every day I'm learning something. So so if you had to give a prediction between him and Dr. Mike, who would you choose? I mean, it's hard because I don't know much about Dr. Mike, uh, but I know he's apparently he's been boxing for 10 years. I don't know if it's just like pad work because I've done that too. I did that for a year. I've done pads and uh, mitts and heavy bag, but it's different when you're boxing someone's so maybe if, if Dr. Mike has done that, I mean, either one, I guess he has a little bit of advantage with more experience wearing boxing gloves and striking in general, but uh, you know, I, I, I guess I, I, think I would lean towards Dr. Mike if he's an experienced boxer, but I dubs he's doing well. So, if he, and we have like another month, so you never know. I don't know. I think you might get surprised too. One thing my coach keeps telling me is I feel I have an advantage over Matt because I'm more athletic and stronger and I, I get hit by cars. And like, I'm, I, I, that's my job is to like get hurt. And Matt doesn't do that. So I was like, okay, I think I have an advantage, but you just, he keeps saying you don't know what's going to happen. He might hit you randomly in this one temple and like, you might black out, your head might jostle. So you just never know what's going to happen in a fight because it's crazy. So I, I have no, I couldn't tell you what I, what I'm predicting or what I would think who I think would win. I hope, enough, I, hope I, I hope I dubs wins because you know it's his event. So and he's been trying. He's like the underdog, and I always root for the underdog. Yeah, yeah, no, it, uh, we're hoping the best for both men. Yeah, but like, yeah, totally. so another big topic about the Creator Clash event is if Alex Wasabi is fighting on it. Do you have any back like backstage news on if he's on the card or not? Did it didn't it, did it say in the announcement that he was on it in the uh, lineup? I thought it said in iDubs' it event did. up today. It it did say or didn't? It it's, it showed him there, but then I think Happy Punch reported that uh, he didn't sign a contract or anything. That's oh, I don't know. You if you know um, I, I heard that they were talking to him. I don't know. I honestly don't know who's confirmed or not because they don't really tell all of us that. We just see people chatting in Discord and... I thought I thought everyone had signed the contract that was in the Discord, but there's been a ton of people who've dropped out and are in. I honestly don't know right now who is confirmed. I'm just kind of like focusing on my thing. I know that like my friends, like I know Aaron, uh, Eagle Raptor, and Matt and Ryan from Super Mega are in it. Those are kind of the guys that like I talk to a lot. And Harley, I talk to Harley. We text and stuff. These are like the guys I've worked with in the past, so I mostly know about them. But the other guys. I don't really know. I see I see Dr. Mike in the Discord chatting a bunch. So I know he's obviously in. The other guys I don't really know for sure, though. I thought Alex was in it. I thought he was. Is Alex in the Discord? He's in the Discord. But there's a lot of people in the Discord who aren't even in the fight anymore. So it's hard to know. There's been a lot of people coming and going. That will be big because what I'm confused about is Alex potentially has a fight with KSI lined up, and that that's huge because it's going to oh, be KSI. Oh, was that for August or something? Yeah, so I don't know if he'd, he'd be like willing to risk losing on Creator Clash, you know? Yeah. Who is he supposed to fight in Creator Clash? Does he not? Is it not announced? Oh, people are saying... Yeah, people are saying Manny Pacquiao's son. Oh, I heard that. That would be insane. That guy's like... That's like the... Isn't Manny Pacquiao like one of the greatest boxers ever? And he's training his son. Exactly. That would be wild. That would that would be wild. I mean, yeah, and also, so if he's supposed to go against Manny Pacquiao's son, you'd think he might not win that one unless the guy's not very good. But then to go follow up with KSI, those are two huge main events. I wouldn't know what I wouldn't know what to do if I was him. Yeah, because you want to keep your streak going, I guess, yeah, right? Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, people are saying Manny Pacquiao's son isn't the best, so that's why oh. that fight kind of makes sense, I guess. 
if if that was the guy who was in the event, um, I haven't seen that guy in the Discord. I don't think so. I don't know. But uh, if he fought him and he wasn't very good, that would look awesome to have that on your record and then go two wins, one against Manny Pacquiao's son, and then go for KSI. That'd be pretty intimidating, I would think, for KSI. Unless KSI just yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that would take Alex to a whole new level. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about that so, one. Yeah, so what else I wanted to talk about is, like, taking – like, other than boxing, right, you've had a career in YouTube for such a long time. What are some highlights from your YouTube career? Like, can you talk about – can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so well, some highlights from my career, I guess. Some of the bigger moments for me are, like – Things that uh, like I got, I became the spokesperson for Skittles just by from making crazy videos on my own in an alley uh, as a self-proclaimed spokesperson for Skittles. It's this character I did, and wow. Skittles liked them so much that they started using them on their website. And then they eventually just they sent me a vending machine. Then they sent Kim Kardashian and all these other people, and then they sent one to me. And then they sent mm -hmm. me the inbox. They started sending me all these gifts, and then eventually they were like, "We're just gonna make you the spokesperson." And it was for a year. I did these commercials. So that was like a big highlight. I had my own shoe uh, that was in journeys and shoe stores, had my face on it. And it's because I wore this brand of shoes in all my dance videos and the dance videos were getting a ton of attention. And uh, I then had my own sneaker. I got on the cover of LA Weekly. There was like some really big thing. And I'm like the guy that like, I'm not huge. No one really knows me. They just, I'm that guy people go, oh yeah, I've seen that guy around. So like, I'm like, I'm like this mystery person that like kind of like sometimes gets recognized, but no one really subscribes because <laughs> they don't know who they're subscribing to. They're always doing different characters. So my whole like career on YouTube is an anomaly. Honestly, I always say YouTube is a hobby for me because I act and I, you know, audition constantly for television and movies. And that's kind of a thing I shoot like films and I'm working on a feature film right now. But like I always have ideas and I'm always putting videos out because I just have a lot of ideas and I have cameras. So the stuff that happens on YouTube is like a bonus in my opinion, but it's also a bonus that has become my like full-time career, if that makes sense. So yeah, the whole thing, all of YouTube has been a great a success, honestly, for me. And this new dad character, the character I'm boxing as is taken on its whole, it's a whole other world where now I'm like in with Marshmallow and all these other DJs and music videos as this dad character dancing. And now I have like huge people. Um, Danny Brown, a huge rapper, is a fan of the dad series. And I got him in the series and then on one of the songs. And uh, Iron Mouse is this huge Twitch streamer. She's, I became friends with her. So like this whole dad thing, everything has been amazing and very unexpected and weird and awesome so i guess the whole thing has been a highlight for me that's awesome man and and you're still killing it bro I, I hope yeah it's, it's weird for you youtube's tricky because if you don't upload like constantly your views are just gone the next week and then you after a month of uploading again they start coming back so it's a bummer when you put a lot of effort into something and you haven't uploaded in a while because you're like working on like something that's a video that's costing you ten thousand dollars and then like a thousand people watch it and the last video had like four hundred thousand so it kind of like it's kind of a stress it's a very frustrating world being on youtube but uh, I love it. I just like making stuff. So if no one's, even if no one watched, I'd still be, that's why it happened in the beginning. I was making stuff for no one and I was just doing it for fun. So I try to keep that mentality because it's like, it can be rough when you have like big highs and then no one's around because the algorithm isn't working for you. You got to remember like you're doing it for fun. So I try to just keep having fun and put it out weird stuff that makes me happy. And uh, hopefully this whole event is another way for me to do that in like a sort of a different, uh, a different creative direction in the boxing world you know all right guys a huge shout out to nathan barnett for coming on the show under these circumstances unfortunately the power went out in my area during our interview i was having a great conversation with nathan and we will have him on again for sure but i hope you guys enjoyed this short podcast we're gonna have more out hopefully this week definitely next week and uh, 